take away my vision that these eyes that now now can see it pride me up the food I eat even
teach these young kids. Lord, help us all, Father, just to draw closer to thee and hearken diligently to thy voice, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Fellowship a little bit and we'll figure out something. Then come help us sing a little.
like a bird out of prison that's taken its flight like a blind man that God gave back his sight like a poor wretched beggar that's found fortune and fame I'm so glad that I found out He could bring me out through His holy name. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He could bring me out, show me the way. I'm so glad that I found out He could bring me out, show me the way. i 
Enjoy seeing these little ones enjoy the music. We prayed on this altar for Clementine to be here for a long time, didn't we? I won't ever get in her way and stop her from coming up here. Amen. Uh, I do got a prayer request, keep the Schubert family that uh, I talked about Sunday. Uh, Luke, the 25-year-old little missionary, did pass away, and I know his family's struggling. They had a funeral yesterday. Uh, to them parents, Renee, it's got to be just like seeing these little ones. I mean, he's just their baby. They took care of him for the last couple of months in their house, and I know that's a big hole. I know they're hurting. Uh, his sister is actually, she's pregnant with a little boy. So let's pray that everything goes good with that. And God starts to heal that, that family in only a way he can. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter number 3. I think Kelly's lesson is longer than mine tonight. She's got a little help back there. So pray for them. You've heard all this before that I'm going to read about and talk about. But I feel like a lot of you are struggling and I can struggle with this and this is so deadly. What I'm going to talk about here in just a few minutes. Genesis 3. How many of you found your place? You can stay seated tonight. I want you to listen. To what the Bible says right here, 
We'll just go uh, verse by verse. Lord, help us tonight. In Jesus' name. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Verse number 6. That's where I started. How many of you know this story? The fall of man. God told them, Denise, don't eat of this. This is it. This is one limitation. Don't eat of it. I've heard somebody say that Adam probably ate the fruit because Danny loved Eve so much that he ate the fruit, but I'll tell you what he done. He made a choice. Just like us, he had the same choice, Randall. He could have said, no, that's forbidden. I don't want it. But he made that choice. And he may have loved her so much. And he may have cared for her so much. But he fell into a trap. And she fell into a trap. And I want you to listen to the trap that they fell into. And I bet you a lot of you and, uh, and me included have fell into this. And the eyes of both of them were open, And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together. And made themselves aprons. Can you imagine this picture? And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. The book of James says in chapter 1 verse 15, When lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. When lust is birthed, Randall, when it gives birth into something, it brings forth sin. Anytime that something that's forbidden or something that the Word speaks against, uh, anytime, Tommy, that you pick up something that you know better than to pick up, or I pick up something that God has delivered me from, it's going to conceive something and birth something into our lives. And listen to what the Bible says. And sin, when it is finished, man, what a long road. Leader that is. Oh my goodness. Sin is birthed. And then it says, Danny, when it is finished. You ever heard that old saying, sin will take you farther than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay? Me and Josh was talking the other day and he said that three or four times and me and him talked about it. And buddy, it's the truth. When sin is conceived and then it's birthed into your life and it becomes... Your life, Tommy, it'll take you to the point that when it's finished, when it's wrung every little bit of life left in you, when it's got everything that it can get out of you, Denise, when it's finished with you, it'll dust off its hands and walk away. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Has anybody saw that happen? Have you ever had that happen to you? Listen, I'm going somewhere with this. We need to get through just a few verses. Imagine this picture. They hid themselves from the presence of God. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Get that picture in your mind. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, This is one of the greatest questions in the Bible. Search yourself right now at this moment. I went to the heart doctor yesterday, Doug. Well, it's just a checkup, thank the Lord. Well, the little girl coming there, she took all my stuff, asked me questions. I told her what I wanted to tell her and what she wanted to hear. <laughs> the doctor come in and he took his little thing, put it in his ear, stuck it to my chest. Sounds good. Sounds good. Take a deep breath. Lungs are clear. Come back in a year. Well, that's all good. But he don't know no more about my heart than I did when I went in that place. Because really, he just knows it's beating and I could have told him that from the car. And that's kind of how we do a checkup when we really look to see where we are with the Lord and where we are in our lives. 
Well, I went to church Sunday, and I went the Sunday before that. Now, I'm here on Wednesday night. Now, I must be pretty good, Doug. Said my prayers once this week. Bless my food. I'm in a pretty good place. But the Lord asked him, said, where are you? Where are you tonight with the Lord? Where are you tonight in your spiritual walk? Where are you at compared to this time last year, Doug? Or this time ten years ago? Where are you at with the Lord tonight? That ain't what I'm preaching about, but that'll help you while we're here. Now listen. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Okay, now here's his opportunity. Here's when the game begins. Right there at that moment, Lita, he had a chance to change history. He could have said this right here, Danny. He could have said, yes, I did, and I'm sorry. So when you figure out where you're at and you're willing to give that reply, you're in a good place. You might have messed up and you might have done wrong, but if you'll just take that whatever you've done, whatever's got a hold of you, whatever's trying to birth into your life, if you'll just take it and say, yes, I've done it. Yes, I've thought about it. Yes, I've messed up and, and get a hold of that and get rid of it at that moment. Denise, go ahead and acknowledge it and get it out of there and say, yes, I'm sorry, forgive me. Do you know what the Lord would have done? He would have said, okay. That's all I wanted to hear. Are you alright tonight? So they begin a game and the title of my message tonight is going to be called the blame game. The blame game. Has anybody ever played the blame game? Me too. Listen. Verse number 12. And the man said, the woman. Listen to what else he said. Whom thou gavest to be with me. So here's the beginning of the blame game, Doug. I eat the fruit, but it's her fault. And really, Lord, if you want to get down to the brass tacks, it's your fault because you gave her to me. I was fine here by myself. The garden was doing good. No problems. But you gave me a woman. So it's her fault. And it's your fault. It was his fault. It was Adam's fault. It was Eve's fault. They were individuals. Separate souls. Two different people. But we want to play the blame game. If... We go to a ball game sometimes. Danny will get in the car and I'll look over at Kelly and I'll say, That umpire stole that game from us tonight. This other person, they just didn't do that. The coach. Oh my Lord, the coach, the coach, the coach. Anybody else? If, if I was the coach, I'd do this. And then somebody talk about you on the way home. <laughs> it's the blame game. And we all fall into it. But it's one of the most toxic. One of the most dangerous. One of the most devastating things that a brother that was ever put into society. When they started the blame game at that moment when he should have said, Lord, I did it. I'm sorry. I wish I hadn't have. It's too late. I wish I hadn't have. The Lord would have made it right. He would have still clothed them. He would have forgiven them. But when they conceived that into their lives, Alan, it just started a trend that's went all the way through Cain and Abel and all the way down through time, all the way to us. Uh, the first thing we want to do when anything goes wrong or anything messes up, we want to say, you did it! I talked to a young man uh, this week, a young man that knows the Lord. and I talked to him about the Lord for a second and he said, I'm just a little bit bitter at God. And I, I'm not ready to go to church or I'm not ready to do anything for God right now. I'm just bitter at God. I don't know what to say that because God's perfect. 
God's perfect. But it's like this. Listen to me tonight. If you make a storm in your life, if you make a storm and a mess in your life and then it rains, don't get mad because it rains. If you are willing to make a mess, and I get tired of the church being blamed and the preacher being blamed. I've heard this so many times in the last 15 years. You, you just wasn't there. But Dan, you can't leave the, the, a job. You can't quit your job in the morning and go out and crawl into a bottle somewhere and go run around on your family and live like a dog and then two years later come back and say, I've hurt my hand, I want workman's comp. What are they going to say? They're going to say, you're crazy. But the church gets blamed and preachers get blamed and deacons get blamed and people get blamed. It's a blame game. What it is, instead of stay, saying, I messed up, I'm sorry, I failed, I apologize, I want to make it right. And it goes both ways when we have messed up. Then he just own it, but don't blame it. Nobody can make you do nothing. Nobody can make you do nothing. The man and his wife, one of my best friends, had a toxic relationship with a, with a lady. She, she left him. He lost everything that he had in time. And he always, till the day he died, blamed her. Blamed her. But it's all choices. You've got a choice whether to pick yourself up and go on. Or sit down and let so whatever is trying to rule your life have your life and say it's their fault, it's their fault, it's their fault, and sit and die pointing at them when you can stand up, dust the ashes off of yourself, and go on and live your life. Amen. The blame game. Do we all get caught up in it? We all get caught. If everywhere you go, I've said this before, if everywhere you go, it seems like people's bad and you end up having to leave, it might be you. Amen. It don't happen a hundred times in a row. It will happen, but not everywhere. Are we all right? I'll be done in just a, just a minute, but this is definitely the most vicious cycle in history. Would you agree, Doug? The blame game is the most vicious cycle that ever started in mankind. It is the whole conception of sin. Starts with the blame game. I could, I could blame a lot of people for my problems. But nobody made me do it. They might have offered. But nobody made me. That's the choice you make. That's exactly right. And then it conceives. Listen I'm done right here in just a minute. I know this wouldn't take long. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is that that thou hast done? So the Lord kind of took Adam's complaint right there, didn't He? So He took Adam's complaint and He said, All right, woman, what have you done? So in other words, He was going to see if she was the bigger woman. Do you know what I'm saying? So He's putting the ball in her court so Eve had the opportunity to do this. Lord, I did mess up. Lord, I did sin. And Lord, I'm sorry, and I want to repent of it, and I'm not going to do it anymore. That's called repentance. Godly sorrow worketh repentance, which leads to salvation, right? Godly sorrow. Being sorry you've done something and not doing it anymore. That's godly sorrow, Alan, when you really do that. Don't see a lot of that no more. Don't see people that's so heartbroke. Over a sin that they committed. Own it and say, I'm not doing that anymore. This should be for the Sunday crowd, shouldn't it? I just give it as the Lord. I don't even read the mail. I just put it in the box. Amen. Listen. Listen to what the Bible says. We'll be done in a minute. Listen to the question. The Lord giver. What is this? That thou hast done. What another great question. So we got where art thou? And what is this that thou hast done? A chance to say where you're at. And on what you've done. And the woman said the serpent beguiled me. And I did eat. The serpent 
beguiled. He tricked me. He was stealthy. He was smart. He was cunning. She stood there and had a conversation with him. Eyeball to eyeball. I believe it happened just like the Bible said. Do it just like it happened. Just like the Bible said. I believe that. Do you believe that? And I believe that he did trick her. And he, he twisted her faith. And God had a plan. Thank God he had a plan the whole time. God wasn't caught off guard. He wasn't confused. One third of the angels done bailed out on him. If, if Satan could confuse them into leaving... Who do you think you are tonight? Who do you think you are not to believe a lie or get caught up? That's, that's why you don't even let that little bitty seed of blame and doubt and confusion. And when you realize you're pointing and blaming and hating everybody else because of a mess you're in, you're in the wrong. Just go ahead and own it and go on. You can spend your whole entire life hating and blaming. When it does no good, it doesn't change one single thing. She said, it's the serpent. Listen to this profound statement. Anybody ever heard of Billy Sunday? Raise your hand if you've heard of him. He was something else, wasn't he? I'm a straight shooter. I'm going to read you this statement. We'll go home in just a minute. <laughs> if you don't do your part, if you don't do your part, listen to this. Don't blame God. That's deep, ain't it, Dan? That's simple. That's plain talk. There ain't a person alive that shouldn't be able to understand that, that can comprehend it all. If you don't do your part, Doug, if you're willing to go out and just squander everything God's given you, if you're willing just to say, I want to live my life how I want to live my life, I want to be happy, whatever it takes, I want to do what I want to do, I want to go against the Word of God. I want to rebel. I want to do whatever I want to do, David. Whatever. I want that life that that fruit conceived. The wages of sin is death. There is pleasure in sin for a season. If you say, preacher, why did you sin? I'll never forget the first time I ever put any drugs in me. I wasn't 15, 16 years old. An older influence. And Doug, when I done it, I wanted more. I didn't have to be pressured. I was on the hunt. And for however many years, Justin, that's what I lived for. It would control me. I wouldn't work as hard... For my family, I still couldn't work as hard as for my family as that worked me for those years. It conceived and, and became me. But God broke that. And I could, I could blame Him for everything that ever happened. But I did the same thing to other people. And I tried to rescue some. I tried my best. I mean, I made it my life's mission on one fellow that Randall I can remember. I led him right into it. Right into it. Right into it. And I couldn't pull him out. Kill me. But he can't blame me. He done it. I was lost. I can't blame the one that gave it to me because I done it. The devil's a tempter. You better hear me. Honey, they's, they's, there's men, there's men Right now that stood in, the, in pulpits. In pulpits like this. And could take this Bible. And start in the, book of Reve, in the book of Genesis 1. And go to Revelation chapter number 22. And tell you everything that's in here. And sister tell you what it means. Stood in a pulpit for years. And up one day. And they're gone. Sin conceived in their life. They started blaming people in their home. They wasn't getting what they wanted. They wasn't happy. No, and they're gone. God help us. God help me. God help me to keep my eyes on the cross. God help you to do it. Man, I'm telling you, there's people that sit on these church pews that I never thought would be gone or out in sin. And they're living just like they've come right out of a bar tonight. What happened, preacher? 
sin conceived in their life, and now they're blaming somebody else. That keeps me up so many nights. That, that's the biggest burden of being a pastor. It's when you think about somebody that's fell away. And there's absolutely nothing you can do to go, you can't go carry them back in. You can't drag them back in. You can love them. But there's a certain point that God will even cut you off from going to going to see them. Don't play the blame game. You know what the blame game will do? It'll pull you out of church and keep you there. If you go tonight, Danny, and I'm done. If you go and you go to find Cornerstone's 100 most wanted. Okay? And Julie, you set them down and talk to them. What happened? Tell me, tell me what happened. You know what they're going to start doing? First, they're not going to know. Unless they say, oh, wait, I got in sin and for a long time. And somebody said something about it. Wasn't no secret anyway, most of the time. Or Doug, they'll find somebody to blame. So-and-so done this. So-and-so said that. So-and-so said something about so-and-so, and I just didn't want to be part of that no more, and they start the blame game, the blame game, the blame game. And after a while, it's just, it's a, like we talked about Wednesday night, it's a foolish talk, and it is a game. The devil plays the same game he played in the garden. Exact. Same. He is a master, Dan, at what he does. He's a master. That what he does. Do not underestimate him. Do not let him slip into your life. Do not give him one inch, one thought, one second time. Don't, don't be like Eve and have a conversation with him. Amen. I'm done. Stand to your feet. Don't let the blame game control you. Don't let it push you under the devil's authority. I know somebody tonight. God wouldn't have sent this on a Wednesday night, Doug, if somebody wasn't dealing with blame. Don't let something from your past, something from something somebody's done in your past, somebody might have hurt you for real, hurt you. I mean, for real, done something wrong. They were wrong and you were right. They did wrong, you were right. It hurts you to a point that it scarred you in some kind of way. Do not let the blame game, wasting your time, giving them time, control you. Move on for the Lord. Amen. Let's pray and we'll go home in a minute. Lord, we love you. Thank you tonight. For your word, God, you said it never come back void. God, I stand on that tonight. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to uh, look in the mirror. God, and on uh, what's ours, Lord, give it to you and be repentant. But, and God, I pray that uh, we wouldn't place blame on other people, even if they've done wrong. God, we'd just move on and, and let it go. Lord, help me. God, help me. Tonight, in Jesus' name, Lord, we love you. Amen. Amen. This is something you may need to get in your closet and pray about. Amen. Close your eyes for a minute. If you got somebody right now in your life that you're blaming for something that's hurt you, raise your hand. I want to know who I'm preaching to tonight. Amen. You can put your hands down. Church, I love you. Appreciate you. Fellowship for one another. You'll be at liberty to go.